Hello and welcome to Fitzroy North. I'm standing in a place that will probably look familiar to many of you. Right behind me is the Capital City Trail, also known as the Inner Circle Trail. Now I know you're probably thinking we're going to talk about the Inner Circle Line, and you're sort of correct. Today we're actually going to look at one specific part of the Inner Circle Line, which was the short-lived one station section to Fitzroy. The Inner Circle ran between Royal Park and Clifton Hill in Melbourne's north. This provided a direct connection between three separate lines. However, it never attracted much passenger traffic, mainly because of the confusing and circuitous routes that trains often took to service the six stations. These were from west to east, Royal Park, North Carlton, North Fitzroy, Fitzroy, Rushall and Clifton Hill. Only three of these, Royal Park, Rushall and Clifton Hill, are still in operation today used as part of the Upfield, Mernda and Hurstbridge lines. The railway to Fitzroy was built as a short branch line of the main Inner Circle Railway. Just behind me here is where you can see the original rail reservation still is. It was opened along with the rest of the Inner Circle line on the auspicious date of the 8th of May 1888. The station was built between Napier and Jameson Streets at about Newry Street with some tracks continuing a bit further south, almost to Queen's Parade. Fitzroy Station early on had quite a frequent service, and even had some trains running directly to Flinders Street. Now before I take you down the branch line that we're going to talk about, we first need to look at North Fitzroy Station, because this is where it began. You can see behind me today, the Capital City Trail is slightly elevated above the rest of this grassy area, and you may be wondering why. Well, the reason is that this was the station platform. Right here where I'm standing is where the tracks used to run. And there are still some remnants of the platform here today. You can see here just behind me the, all these blue stone rocks, which form part of the former platform. Some of them are still relatively intact, just like these ones up here underneath these very nice trees. The station's name, like the suburb around it, comes from Sir Charles Fitzroy, who was Governor of New South Wales from 1846 to 1855, and was instrumental in early efforts for Victoria to become a separate colony. Here in Edinburgh Gardens, at the site of the former Fitzroy station itself, there really isn't much left. Just behind me is some housing and other development that mostly came into being after the railway was closed in 1981. When this happened, this sounded the death knell for most of the industry that was located next to the railway. This was due to their easy transport connection via rail being completely removed, and over time these industrial uses moved out and other residential uses moved in. One of the main sources of activity here was the nearby Fitzroy Cricket Ground. Today it is called the W.T. Peterson Oval in Edinburgh Gardens. Game reports of the time used the station as a reference point for directions during commentary. In one example from 1892, one reporter said he kicked the ball in the direction of the railway, something which is definitely not possible to say today. Despite all of this, the station never really took off. The inner circle was a very roundabout way to get to the city, especially compared with the much more direct and frequent trams, most notably the North Fitzroy Electric Tram, which opened in 1886. Just a year after Fitzroy Station opened, direct trains were stopped due to a lack of passengers. After this, the only service to Fitzroy was an infrequent shuttle running only to North Fitzroy Station. This required passengers to interchange, and only ran every 70 to 108 minutes, creating further inconvenience and disincentive compared to the tramways. Then in 1892, the inevitable happened, and passenger trains stopped running entirely, never to return. By this time, it was only carrying about 36,000 people per year. This compares to North Fitzroy Station, which had almost 284,000. So was this the end for Fitzroy Station and its ridiculously short branch line? Well, surprisingly not. Along with passenger trains, there was quite a lot of goods traffic that ran to yards at the station site. The main sources of demand here were briquettes, timber and the National Can Factory. It operated in this way until August 1981, when the rest of the Inner Circle line was also closed. Today, the original station site has been completely built over, 
Most of this was done after 1984, when local residents, councils and politicians campaigned to have the former railway converted into open space and public housing, which was done throughout the mid-1990s. Other than some nice parks, a few sections of rail left behind, and some other bits and pieces of interest only really to historians and gunzels, there's hardly anything left. Probably the most intact remnant left of this branch line are these two rails that have been left embedded in the road at the former level crossing on Alfred Crescent. The second remnant was a footbridge built at Fitzroy Station just behind me in 1900. As a bit of trivia for you, when it was built, it was the longest and highest wooden footbridge anywhere on Victoria's railways. Unfortunately, it was left to rot here after the railway closed in 1981. But in 2004, the Mooroodook Railway Preservation Society deconstructed the footbridge and moved it down to their station at Mooroodook on the Mornington Peninsula. Today it stands there next to the station where it has been very well restored, and I think you can even walk across it. As you walk, ride, scoot or wheel through the Edinburgh Gardens or anywhere else along the Inner Circle line, you can thank the branch line to Fitzroy for all of these amenities. The area has changed a lot over the past 50 years, but this, I think, is worth remembering. I hope you enjoyed this video about Governor Fitzroy's namesake station. Please subscribe if you would like to stay up to date on future videos, and feel free to click the like button as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.